Okay, so, so last time we finished at um, uh, Holonomy and Flux operators. So let me do you recap. Flux operators. Uh, well, it, they act on uh, the Hubert space uh, H zero gamma, and gamma is our lattice, and and this H zero gamma is not uh, non uh, include non gating invariant rate functions. The reason is simply because uh, holonomy and flux, they are not gate invariant. Okay. And the holonomy operator, e, um, AB, so HEAB itself is a, it's a wave function. Well, now when we quantize HEAB uh, itself, it is a um, function of the SU2 group because it is just the matrix element of the spin one half representation. Yeah. And, and now um, we quantize, it becomes an operator, and it acts on uh, the wave function. This is just a multiplication. Yeah, because HAB is a function, and function multiply a function is still a function. Okay, and here AB equals one, uh, one or two. Okay. And secondly, the, the flux operator, Act on the wave function uh, equals to i l p square y by two, and then you have right invariant vector field uh, act on the wave function. Uh, in in uh, more precisely, uh, it is l p squared y by two. Uh, well, this is just a right invariant wave function. Uh, right, right, right invariant. Um, Vector field acting on the function. So it acts on the uh, copy of H uh, at the at E. And it's just a left translation of this group element and take, then take the der derivative of the parameter. Yeah. And I have written it in a more concrete manner. So it's just a partial F, partial H E, um, A B, and tau K, H E, A B. Okay. And summing over E B. Here, here I still using Einstein summation. And, and there was a homework last time asked you to check that the um, commutation relation between those Operators prime is zero and p j p prime equals i l p square And, uh, and P J P K P I equals I uh, minus I L P square that is prime upon K K L P L. Okay, so here just remind you our convention. So L P square is H bar kappa, and our kappa is 16 pi times the uh, Newton gravitational constant. Yeah. Okay, and, and then the here tau j, it is minus i times uh, sigma j. Sigma j is a Pauli matrix. Okay. So, and then this uh, uh, commutation relation, if you compare with our previous Poisson bracket, between holon holonomy and flux, you find the uh, this commutation relation is just a quantization uh, 
of the bottom row. Okay, so, so that's why we say this is a quantum polynomial poly flux algebra. Quantum polynomial flux algebra. Uh, this is something we talked uh, last time. Uh, okay, and, and also uh, last time I emphasized that uh, the last commutation relation is just uh, an analog with the angular momentum uh, algebra. Angular momentum, uh, commutation, the, the commutation relation uh, for angular momentum operators uh, in, in, uh, uh, in quantum mechanics. Okay. Um, all right. So so now from this lecture, we are going to talk about the um, so-called geometric operators. Geometric operators. So we are going to use um, the operator of polynomial flux to construct uh, some more important uh, gauge invariant operators. Okay, and these. Operators are important because they are quantizing uh, geometry. They, they quantize the geometry on the uh, space. Okay. Uh, so the idea is, is the following. So the reason uh, we talk about those geometrical operators is because uh, firstly, classically, uh, gravitational field is just the geometry. Uh, so classically. So gravitational field field is just a geometry, space time, or more precisely curved space time geometry. So this is, uh, well, since we learned GR already, so general relativity, we learned general relativity already. So, so we know that classical general relativity tells, it, tells, tells us that um, uh, gravitational field is just a curved space time geometry. And then uh, quantum mechanically, the idea is also very simple that our, the quantum gravity or operators Operators of gravitational field is just uh, equals to uh, operator of geometry. Operator of geometry. That's why we need to study um, operator of geometry because they are just uh, uh, useful operators for gravitational field. Okay. All right. So, so what are those operators? So, so um, here in this lecture, I'm going to talk about two types of uh, operators. So, firstly, the, the area operator. Area operator and uh, and volume operator. They are they are um, uh, particularly interesting for for loop on gravity. Okay, and in the end, so so um, so uh, here, I'm talking about uh, the, those operators are are for geometries on the space. Remember that our manifold is sigma cross r. So R is time and sigma is the space. Okay, so here the, the operator I'm talking about are uh, quantizing the, the geometry on the space, not, not the space time, uh, not yet the space time. So here uh, I'm talking about the geometry of the space. The reason is that uh, all the fields we described so far are uh, fields on the space, like colonomy and flux. Uh, they are they are discretization of uh, fields on the space sigma because we are using a canonical approach. 
Okay, so here um, all those geometrical operators are quantizing the, the geometry of space. And uh, since we quantize the geometry on the space and the ge geometry of the space is the Riemannian geometry. Um, so, so here, uh, those quantum geometries, they are, they are, uh, they relate to, um, they are usually called a quantum, quantum Riemannian geometry. Reason and because because we are quantizing the geometry of the space. Okay, all right. So let's let's first talk about area operator. Okay. Um, so so let's firstly um, um, tell you what is the area. So we firstly going to the, the the logic is that we first going to write down the classical expression of area. And then uh, discretize these uh, classical expressions. Uh, relates to our relates the area to our lattice variable. Yeah. And then we are going to quantize that discrete expression. Okay. So let's say uh, let's consider um, the uh, this is our space and we have a surface. So um, uh, here I'm just going to uh, suppress one dimension. So we view our spatial slice is um, yeah it's just uh, this this uh, piece of paper and um, um, it's two-dimensional we suppress one dimension and then the surface is just looks like a curve okay and now we are uh, we are going to look at uh, our lattice so because our lattice is just uh, discretizing discretizing our spatial slice so suppose I use uh, blue lines for our lattice All right, and now um, what I can do is I can uh, discre discretize uh, the surface and make a well, more precisely make a lattice analog uh, of this of this surface. Okay. So how to do that? So remember um, uh, the the useful quantity for the lattice is the uh, uh, is the flux. So one of the important quantity. Uh, for the lattice variables are, are flux and flux are uh, smear of the densitized triad E on the dual surface. Yeah? So these are the dual surface. Okay? So these are the surface um, dual to the lattice yeah? where we uh, regularize uh, the, the flux variable. Okay? And now we are going to just use the, those dual surface to discretize these surfaces. So let's call this surface S, all right? And now I'm going to approximate this S by using dual surface. Okay, I think I can go this way. So it's like, a bit like um, approximating a function by using step function. So this is, you can view this um, this surface uh, in color in red color is maybe I call it as red S yeah but you can see that the, the red S is um, is is not exactly uh, our our original surface black S but uh, at least it is approximation well in the continue if we refine the lattice infinitely refine the lattice and finally this uh, red S Red S will be um, will converge to the black S, yeah? converge to our uh, earlier uh, our original surface. Okay, so now let's uh, let's put a label on on the lattice. Let's consider those uh, dual surfaces, and the uh, edges correspond to the dual surface. So let's call this edge E1 and uh, this edge E2. And all the edges uh, involved in 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 this uh, in this game. E4, and this is E5, and this is E6. Okay. So so I'm um, I so here from E1 to E6, I just collecting all the edges whose 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 um, dual faces discretizing the surface. 
Okay. So now, uh, approximately, we can write down S is just equals to, um, let me say, approximately equals to uh, sum over I from one to a certain number and S EI. And here, EI is just here from E1 to E6, just example. And, uh, and how to determine those EIs and EI is just the EI intersect with S is non trivial. Yeah. So EI, so it's the uh, S can be discretized by using uh, dual, dual phases. And, and the dual phases is due to those edges, and these edges um, has non trivial intersection with, with the surface. Yeah. Okay, so now. Uh, we can write down the uh, classical expression for the area of the surface, so classically, classically, and the area of the surface, uh, let me use the R, surface equals to this integrate. This is a, a classical expression for the smooth surface, S sigma and determinant. Of h, okay. and here the sigma is the coordinate on the surface. So, s, and here h is just the induced matrix. Induced matrix. <coughs> okay, so um, now uh, we can. So because our, our useful variables are holonial flux and uh, in the continuum, uh, the continuum version are uh, connection and the densitized choice. Yeah. So we have to replace all those quantities in terms of uh, quantity variables we are interested in. But the result is that uh, you can write the equivalent formula S equals to integral S. And this square sigma. You can replace this square root determinant of h by a different square root, square root of n a d a j and n d d b j and in coordinate sigma. Coordinate sigma. So here, this n a. This n a is the uh, co-normal of of the surface. So this surface is two is a two-dimensional surface. This s is dimension of s is two. It's a two-dimensional surface uh, uh, because our spatial slice is space three-dimensional. So uh, it's a hypersurface in sigma, and it has a unique co-normal. And this co-normal is chosen to be just a uh, uh, well, so we, I need to, to draw a diagram. Um, okay, so so we just uh, choose. So let me see. This is so. Let's again. This is uh, the, the 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 board is the whiteboard is the our three dimensional surface sigma, and then we have a, a hypersurface. This is S, and on hypersurface we have coordinate sigma one, and have coordinate sigma uh, two. Right, sigma two, and we also have another coordinate which is uh, transverse, transverse to sigma three, transverse to the surface. I call that coordinate sigma three. Yeah, it's sigma three. So um, you just choose arbitrary coordinate, and the in the end the formula is it, it just doesn't depend on uh, the coordinate. Okay, and and here this n a is just a d sigma three. Sigma three a. So because the surface can be uh, understood as um, this S is just equals to uh, uh, all the points satisfy sigma three equals to zero. Yeah. Sigma three equals to zero, and then of course the co-normal of this surface is just the d sigma three a. Okay, and and this is uh, the formula we are going to use. So um, I think I should. Um, Give you a tool. It's it's just some multi-line calculation. 
uh, to prove that uh, the quantity under the square root is really uh, just the, the, uh, the determinant of the induced matrix. How we see this? Um, okay, so so uh, here to prove this, you just need to use E A J. Uh, so uh, in our earlier definition, the the densitized densitized triad, which is the density, is the square root of determinant Q, and then E A J. But you can write in an equivalent formula. So it equals to, so firstly, you have a sign of the uh, tetrad and then one half. So I first write it down and, and explain all those quantities epsilon, ABC, epsilon, ABC, C, 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 L. So, so here you can, uh, before this, this uh, equality, uh, you are writing these uh, densitized triads you, you see in terms of uh, the basis, the three bases, the tetra itself. Yeah. But uh, after the after the equality, the result is that you write your uh, e in terms of uh, co-basis, in terms of co-triad. So this is this is triad, but here you write e in terms of two and but uh, you put two epsilons and but these two epsilons are are not uh, 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 volume elements but uh, just epsilon symbol just uh, epsilon symbol For example uh, <coughs> Epsilon one, two, three equals to one. So which means that this epsilon, so here in this formula, I'm using ABC just uh, like ordinary component index. Uh, it's, it's, uh, here, all, all the ABCs are, are just a component index. They are not abstract index. Yeah. And this epsilon ABC, it is not a tensor. It is just an epsilon symbol in, in certain coordinates. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's easy to understand this formula if you write down this formula, it depends on coordinate because um, this E A J it is a densitized triad. So uh, square root, it involves square root of determinant Q and it, it, uh, it transforms in different way. Uh, it is not a tensor, it is a densitized tensor. Yeah. So, and uh, it's for a that it actually depends on coordinate. Yeah. And uh, it become, the quantities become independent coordinate if you integrate uh, this E, e A J. Okay, anyway, so, so this, then the quantity of this sign E, it's, it is uh, relates to either this uh, tetrad is left-handed or right-handed. So it is, um, it equals to, equals to plus minus, plus one or minus one. Plus one or minus one uh, or, um, for right or left hand basis. So because here um, this E can be left or can be right. So uh, if you define E, no matter right or left, it's just uh, E times square root of Q. Then, if you convert to co triad in this formula, you have to add uh, plus one or minus one. Yeah. So, um, you should check by yourself this formula if you haven't done that. Um, okay, so now let's plug in this formula in uh, here uh, and to see what is going on. In a e a i and the EPJ and the sigma coordinate. And these, so here JJ is summed and AABB are, are summed. Then we plug in the formula. So here you get a square of the sign, then you don't need to care about sign anymore. So it's NA, BC, Um, 
Okay, and if what happens if, if uh, sorry, this is one or four. So what I did is just to plug in the formula, plug in the formula for E. All right. Uh, now you can, uh, so first thing you can do is you find that you, you have a contraction between two epsilons, right? And you just use uh, the earlier formula, formula uh, about contraction of epsilon. Um, what you get is one half. So because epsilon epsilon give you two times uh, deltas. And, and you get delta k m delta l n and anti synchronization between m and n. Yeah. So and and then you get a bunch of e e k e Now you get deltas, you just sum over delta. You get this one half. A and B. Um, Let me see what is going on. And so, so here you can uh, firstly uh, move. So Mn is uh, replaced to Kl. And so here it means Kl is, it is uh, anti symmetric. Uh, but, uh, but because Kl is the same, well, anti symmetrization of Kl is the same as anti symmetrization of E and F. And, but, but here, uh, EF is automatically anti-symmetrized. Yeah, so then we can remove this anti-symmetrization of KL. Okay. Now, uh, so now this K, K, you can see there's a contraction between, there's a sum between K and K. And, you know, once you sum K and K, and you, you get a metric. You get a uh, metric because this is just the EKB, EKE. And here the same, you get ELC and ELF. So you get two metrics. And uh, well, I, I put it here. Um, And um, well, and these because n a, this is just the d two point three a, right? So it means that uh, well, and this is uh, this is in terms of uh, this is uh, in case I view a uh, is abstract index. Well, otherwise, if I view a is just a um, coordinate index, so it it just means n a equals to delta three a. Right, so so then what you get is just uh, one half epsilon. You just replace a and d to be three, three. Um, well, here on the surface, I I use capital I and capital J for the coordinate, uh, like for the coordinate index on the surface. Just uh, not a big deal. Just the name U K L Q I J. Yeah. So here you can see that the Q component, the component of Q is completely restricted on the surface. Yeah. Remember that the induced matrix for the induced matrix, QIJ equals to QAB 
Control X A, Control I. Okay. Okay. And if you consider this, uh, this equation is adapt to the sigma coordinate, which is sigma one two is on the surface, sigma one and sigma two on the surface, and then uh, you replace your previous previous two a b in terms of the induced matrix, and in, two, in terms of this formula, and then you get the induced matrix, and this this is what q i j happens here, and this is just the H I J. Okay. And then this result, it is just a, well, an epsilon three I J is just a two-dimensional epsilon I J. Yeah. And this is just uh, just the determinant of H. This is just a, nothing but calculating the determinant. All right. So, so now you can see that uh, the quantity inside the square root is uh, just uh, the determinant of h in the sigma coordinate. Um, all right. So, so now we work on the formula. So area yeah, equals to, uh, approximately equals to sum over i from one to n area of those uh, small surfaces go to the edges and here this a area uh, ci is given by integral uh, ci to sigma a a a a a a a Now this is the formula. It's much easier. To, it is much easier to work on. Uh, now because um, because uh, all the surfaces are very small. Because S E I are all small. Okay, we are going to do some approximation. Okay. Um, well, this is all small because um, we view that this lattice is very refined. So, and we are close to the continuum limit. Okay. So now what we are going to do is write approximation for, for this area. This is approximately to be, uh, so here you can see that this under the square root, it is a quadratic form of E. Okay, so it is like quadratic form of E under the square root and then taking the integral, then this is area. Well, I'm mean, now what we are going to do is the approximation is, is that we put the integral inside the square root. So approximately it will be uh, square root integral um, of e i. Um, e squared sigma and a. And and the area equals to that uh, up to order higher order in mu. Okay. So so the area is of order of the quadratic order in mu. Mu is the coordinate length. Uh, mu is the coordinate length of the of the lattice of the lattice x. Okay. So, so the area itself it is proportional to mu squared because it's area, um, and so the area can be approximated by using this formula up to some error, up to uh, high, up to the error of order uh, mu, mu cubed, higher order mu. Yeah. So how to see this? Uh, the way to see it is is just uh, if you consider this e is approximately a constant on the surface, then well, I mean, you can you can factor out this. You can you can easily perform this uh, integral because e a n a will be a constant, right? And then clearly you can uh, integrate uh, 
uh, d sigma is, is again, it's a constant. Yeah, and you get a pair 